What's up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to go over Stellantis, ticker symbol STLA. Uh, year to date, this company is up 28%, and over the course of one year, is up 38%. They do report their next earnings uh, on this Friday. So earnings are right around the corner, and I think we'll get some pretty good insight as to how the UAW strike will completely impact the company. But so far, what we do know is that the chief financial officer, the CFO, has said it will likely negatively affect the company's profitability by nearly 750 million in euros, which is pretty close to USD. And then according to Deutsche Bank, their estimating will likely suffer about $6.4 billion earnings loss over the contracted period, which is over the course of four years, because what they're going to do, tentative agreement, I believe, I'm pretty sure that has been approved or pending approval, uh, is going to offer employees 25% pay raise over four and a half year period as well as the return of cost of living adjustments. So currently, uh, to my knowledge, to what I can see, that is the biggest headwind on this company. And if you guys know of another headwind or another issue with this company, let me know because this one is very interesting and the financials on this one look really, really good. So over here on Stellantis, they manufacture vehicles. You know, they have several different companies they manufacture under. They have Abarth, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, uh citron maybe ds dodge fiat fiat professional jeep maserati ram opal lancia oh boy vax hall <laughs> some other names i can't really pronounce so they do all they've got all these different brand names that they uh manufacture under so um kind of a, a an underground car manufacturer i guess i don't know because I, i'm kind of shocked that this one is not trading at a higher premium than where it is right now and you'll see that uh, as we go through this, this just this is kind of kind of kind of crazy that there's a chance that this thing is worth a lot more than what it is right now. So we got our top line revenue, gross profit, net income, all three in the upward direction, all trending higher. Net income we can see on its own chart, it, you know, just taking off. Gross margins sitting at about twenty percent. Net margins right right now sitting at ten point four percent, but because of the strike, assuming it's about seven hundred fifty million dollar hit to you know. Obviously, it would be SG&A costs. So that's going to get included into that. Assuming it's, let's just round up to like, let's say it's call it 900 mil or 800 mil, it's going to cost them. You know, then you take, you know, basically instead of net, net income being two, basically 21 million, let's just call it 20 million. Divide that by your current revenue. That's that's 10%. You're still at a 10% net margin. So your margins, your margin rates are still pretty good on this company. Revenue, gross profit, year over year change. You know, they're still doing pretty good growth on this company in the last three years here. They have had a couple negative years, but overall growth, very good. Return on invested capital. These are the two things that we were kind of paying attention to as of lately is return on invested capital and earnings yield. And return on invested capital at 19%. And they've got no problem maintaining that for the last few years. Earnings yield, also same thing. They're, they're above what I would say at least 12% minimum. And they're doing three times that. So very good. P.E. ratio sitting at 2.8. I mean, it just this is I'm telling you, these financials on this company are, are pretty remarkable. Uh, cash to debt. Oh, you know, they got fifty three billion dollars in cash and seventy three, almost seventy four billion dollars in short term debt and cash to total debt. They've got one hundred twenty one billion dollars in total liabilities net income to free cash flow last three years. Again, this company just in the last three years has really turned a corner and done a very good job financially. And we can just see this over here. This, this thing is just trending in the right direction and doing it very well. And uh, we got, you know, our net income sitting at $21 billion, which will probably decline a little bit, depending on how they handle their financials. If they raise the prices or what they're going to do, maybe they'll just uh, eat the cost and move on. $15 billion in free cash flow. And here's our free cash flows over here. This company has been a free cash flow positive for what we can see. Obviously not great right here, but this is also 2020. But we can see free cash flows are very good at this company. Share account dilution. This is the one thing I I'm I, I warrants a deeper research in is to understand why we keep doing big share issuances. The one thing I can think of is if there's like notes coming due that instead of investors uh, taking their money back, they're they're getting shares. So that would be my assumption as to why our share account dilution has basically doubled just in one year like that instead of steadily 
you know, climbing like it typically does on most companies. Dividend, uh, they kind of offer a dividend. It's kind of hit or miss by the looks of it. One year they offer it, the next year they don't. Then they offer it again. Now it's declining. So I, I wouldn't rely too much on the dividend. If anything, on this company, I would actually like to see them maybe just eliminate the dividend if they're not going to be consistent with it and maybe just, uh, you know, make it a, I don't know, instead of a dollar, make it like 25 cent dividend or something like that. You don't need an 8% dividend yield. You know, if you're not going to maintain it, so it's not really going to be much of a dividend company for you. But if you do get a dividend, it'll be just out of probably company doing well that year or something like that. Capital expenditures on the company, they're maintaining their CapEx. So with all these growth rates, look, uh, uh, obviously doing a very good job handing higher. CapEx is maintaining around, you know, that 9 to $10 billion range. So pretty good. So overall, the financials to me look look very good. I mean, there's only really one big concern, and that's just the share count. Other than that, I mean, as long as this doesn't do it again and again, I don't know. I mean, this thing, this thing to me is very, uh, very interested. So one thing we didn't see on our financial spreadsheet is, so we're on Stellantis here, is the retained earnings this company has. They've got $79 billion of retained earnings. And that has just grown year over year over year over year. And they continue, we can see the chart there, We can they continue to add into that. So retained earnings, they can do really anything within the company. They can buy back shares, they can pay out a dividend, or they can grow the company. They, they can invest it into, uh, uh, use that money to buy more equipment or buy another plant or build another plant or whatever they want to do with it. So depending on where they're at with that situation, there could be a chance that this company could start issuing a share buyback program. Um, they could start issuing a more consistent, stable dividend and or they could also grow the business even more than where it is right now. So they've got $79 billion sitting there that they can use for several different things. And that would be something that's like a, a little Christmas present, assuming they start one, once they op open that for shareholders, because that's going to be something that we want to see them start to use here soon, because that's a lot of money just sitting there that they could be using to grow the business, pay out dividends or buy back shares or all three. So over here on the comps, we I put in Honda, Ford, GM, and Tesla. I put Tesla on the list because I want to compare margins to Tesla to Stellantis because Tesla's margins are what makes Tesla so important to investors. Those margins are so important. That's all they talk about. So on Stellantis, though, we do have four red flags. We do have more operating cash flow than net income, uh, but not, not much. It's very nominal. Share change year over year, 54% increase in share change, which we just kind of went over, which is that this is the one thing to look into deeper is to understand if there's going to be more potential notes coming due, assuming that's where that came from. I believe it is. Uh, I didn't see anything where it said they just issued, you know, 54% more shares. Pri uh, revenue growth on the company there for the next five years are not predicting or projecting any really revenue or eps growth on the company first two charts because honda is on the chart uh honda is in a different currency than everybody else so is stellantis so we'll just ignore market cap to and revenues over here but we can come over here we can see our growth rate we have tesla at a pretty good growth rate and then it just kind of trickles down over to stellantis almost not quite the worst Honda's is the worst here but stellantis is not looking too great for growth rates right now gross margins here this is what i'm this is what i'm really interested in is okay so here's stellantis honda and then tesla the three best for gross margins and then operating margins you know we got the same thing going on over here uh and actually stellantis is better in profit margin Tesla is slightly better. Um, Tesla has been, obviously, many of, us, many of us are well aware that Tesla has been dropping costs on their vehicles, which is going to hurt their profit margin. I'm not real sure if Stellantis is doing the same thing, but obviously you can see where profit margins are. And these are the two best profit margin car manufacturers I don't, on the, of these five that we're going over. So free cash flow, again, Honda is its own animal here, but we you know, Stellantis is still doing $15 billion in free cash flow, which is pretty close to USD. Um, it's a little bit, uh, I believe USD is a little bit more. Yeah, USD, it'd be a little bit higher in USD count, I believe. In terms of uh, free cash flow, compared to Tesla, compared to everybody here, I mean, Stellantis is doing a much better job free cash flow. Return on invested capital, much better. PE, you're paying a 2.8 PE. I mean, and... I don't see a reason why yet. Earnings yield again. Look at this. I mean, <laughs> this company. I don't know. I'm so. I don't. I. I want somebody to post in the comments and say this company is a piece of crap. And there's data to prove as to why. 
and then we won't buy it and we'll ignore it and move on. But I have yet to find anything that makes me want to not buy this company. Peter Lynch valuation gives them $20.96 per share. Multiples comparison. We're going to eliminate Tesla because of the PE. And that gives us a more natural price of $42.65 per share. Manual PE. We have our market cap minus cash or sorry. Yeah, minus cash add in debt divided by cash from operations gives us 4.8 years to earn our our market cap. I mean, this I just it's just crazy. We have a price to books in at 8.3 five year average, currently at 7.3, peg ratio 0.58, forward looking 0.67, telling us incredibly undervalued. Graham's valuation, I gave them a one for growth. If I gave them a two, it's gonna be like a two hundred dollar valuation, so it'd be an eighty-three dollar valuation. And it probably should be a two, actually. You know what? It really probably should be. And that gives them an intrinsic value of $83.54. Dividend discount model, I mean, you know, their dividend's kind of garbage, but, you know, still it gives us a $7.66 per share. Uh, discounted cash flow evaluation, you know, uh, average growth rate, 228%. Analysts predict 2%. I just match analysts at 2%. It still gives them a DCF price per share of $65.11. Rule 72, we have three sources of EPS growth for an average growth rate of one3 so our future EPS is looking at about seven for a fair value of four dollars seventy five cents. So over here at our favorite or our summary for Stellantis, we have currently trading at eighteen dollars sixty eight cents per share. We get a fair market value on this company of thirty seven dollars forty five cents. Purchase price thirty percent margin safety twenty six dollars twenty one cents. Annos price target is twenty five dollars and thirty cents. And one thing to note on the analyst price target, we've only got three analysts covering that. This, this particular uh, stock, you know, there's not a lot of analysts covering this stock whatsoever. Even if you come over to Seeking Alpha and you come over to here to earnings, like there's just no, there's no analysts covering. There's no revisions from analysts. There's just not a lot of coverage on this company, which is exactly what we're looking for. So even though analysts, the three analysts have an average price target of $25 per share, I don't agree with that. I think it actually should be higher. I, I am actually surprised it's low. So over here on the stock chart, uh, we are sitting on the weekly chart here. I'll hop over to the monthly real quick so you can see where those two trend lines are. So we've just kind of, we've been locked in this upward channel here ever since about 2013, 2014 and just maintaining it. Uh, obviously we're at the top end of the channel right now. So maybe not the best place to buy at the top end of the channel. But I'll tell you what, you know, there's not too many stocks that I'd be willing to pay up a little bit on and, uh, you know, pay at the top of the channel for a company like this because this earnings are in two days. Now, earnings are either going to take it this way or either, either earnings are going to take it this way and maybe break through this channel for the first time in, you know, 10 years. So we'll have to wait and see for sure on earnings. But again, you know, we can see where we're at in this channel. It's very obvious. Typically, you're going to pull back. You're going to probably bounce off this channel a little bit and then you're probably going to pull back eventually, maybe a little bit, maybe not all the way down to here but maybe eventually maybe 16-ish dollars per share roughly. And even though what we just got, $25 is a 30% margin of safety, $26 is. So you're still well within a 30% margin of safety of the numbers that we just went over and got. So you're sitting at probably a, maybe a 40% margin of safety. I don't know, actually pretty close to a 50% margin of safety because if we got $37 per share, half of that is, or no, $18 per share. So you're, you're sitting at about a 50% margin of safety on this company based on the numbers we just went over. And uh, this is one that, again, if you guys know of something, of a reason why this company is worth not buying, uh, you know, put in the comments. I'd really be interested to know and see if somebody else knows something that I can't find. But that is it for Stellantis. If you found value in this video, drop a like, subscribe, and comment. And we'll be back later with another stock analysis video.